Coach's final games before Big 12 play picks up, uh, what's do you feel like you're getting the right rotation that you're coming to expect, or still only eight bodies, you think? Mm, I don't know. I didn't count them. No, I think we're fine. Um, I think the, the key thing was getting Dax back, and now that we got Dax back and figured out a rotation with Dax, I think we're fine. Let's go, boy. What have you seen out of the younger guys and what they've been able to contribute um, in this stretch here of the non-conference games? Well, we throw a lot of things at them, so you know we're they're they're still thinking and not not playing. Um, they've got to get comfortable in, in what we do and not think is this the right rotation to make or is this where I'm supposed to be? Go right side, straight it out. They need to just go ahead and do it without thinking. So, um, they got a long way to go. Part of the challenge with with coaching young guys like that is they get that they see that big lead and, and kind of break away from schemes. No, I don't think they've done that at all. It's just we got six of them. You know, ordinarily you you put one or two in with three guys that know what they're doing and they kind of help them. And for the most part, now when we put them in there, they're in there with five other guys or four other guys that don't work. So it's we got a lot of freshmen. Six freshmen, a lot of freshmen. This is a crucial stretch for them. For the freshmen? Yeah. No, it's crucial. No, I don't think so. I mean, I I think that you know, like Sags can play, you know, in spots. Magic can play in spots. Chase can play in spots. But, you know, we're not going to count on them to play extended minutes. And they'll be a whole lot better when they're with four guys that know what they're doing. They'll be a whole lot better when they're in there with. Dax and JC and Nate and guys that know what they're doing they really don't have to think about it. Where's Sags? You're scoring a lot of points. Um, and I know some shots and actually possess some turnovers, but you're just like you're shooting better and think of the couple halves you've really had to run offense at Temple and certainly against UVA. By and large, pretty well. Um, can you tell? I, I, as you were better off. I thought we, I thought from the beginning we were going to shoot it better. This group put just a, a ton of time in the gym in the summer, and, and I think they were. I think it helped that all of those guys were in there working out. You know, I think they saw a little bit what it takes to. You know, to, to continue to play and, and make money playing basketball. So, particularly the older guys, who are, you know, the J, uh, JC and, Get a move. Let's go. and Tariq and Nate, and those guys were in there. I think JC's always been in there, but I think the other guys have been in there more than what they were before. Is it hard to get a gauge when there's a layup line sometimes? We get to work on rotation. Switch it up. We get to work on different looks, different the way different people try to break it. Um, it's better left side, left side. Side. Offensively, though. I mean, that's it, 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 it's kind of it, it's it, it's that way everywhere. Uh, I mean, you you look at. Uh, like for instance, people are, are, are saying Michigan State had a really hard schedule. They did. Now they go into a, a six-game field that they're playing people like we're playing. I mean, the reality of it is we have to play home games because we have to make money. Open it up! Open it up! Who's this 
bunch like the day after winning a game by you know, 50 or 60, 53, I guess? They, I don't know. I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in uh, Portsmouth, Ohio. Uh, they don't change much. Yeah. They really don't. Get a little giddy every once in a while. And they, I'm going to put both into the feelings of that, uh, not, not necessarily quite material, but uh, from an individual standpoint, you know, you're a defensive guy, is it, is it, how much of it is system, how much of it is technique, and how much of it is that unknown intuition of, you know, feeling what's going to happen? Well, I think, I think JC's the best we got, but he is because he's got great hands and he's got great feet. He can that take some chances that other people can't take and still recover. And I think yeah, I think the biggest thing is anticipation. He's got great anticipation as to where the ball's going to be. Is that innate or is that from film, film study or is it... Uh, he, he, he looks at a lot of film. He looks at a lot of film, but I think, you know, he kind of grew up playing that way. That's the way they play. And yeah, no film on the streets of Chicago. No. Uh, yeah. they, and they played that way at, at, uh, at Proviso. So, you know, and he played for Donnie Boyce, and, and, and that's how Donnie played you know, when, when he and Michael Finley and those guys were playing. So, that's just, it's kind of the culture. Yeah, I mean, it, he's totally different than Nate. I and mean, Nate is your other top ball stealer. Is that function of the position he's playing defensively, or is it, uh, again, does he have a little bit of that stuff that... Nate's pretty smart. That's kind of... Nate's pretty smart. Nate's pretty smart. He figures things out. He's got a... He's got a, a, a very good aptitude for learning basketball. 